the develop I, I, it's sort of like segments of, of, of my life and I can remember that we all used to go to um, the catacombs mm -hmm. okay, and I that. that that really got us into buying quite expensive records so I mean, an expensive record in them days would have been a fiver eight quid was like a top tune you know yeah, uh, yeah. and we used to buy expensive records and one day um, we, we had sort of like a, a lot of one upmanship right? going on you know like uh, my friend got uh, did he know from uh, let the music play from Sam Susan in, in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and it was a secret where he got it from and he said where you get this from <laughs> and they, he, they, they just wouldn't tell us so I was uh, trying to climb the ladder of uh, having good records and I went to uh, select a disc one day and I, I bought it was £10 it was Rufus Lumley I'm standing on Stateside on British Stateside it was 10 quid that was that was like the top side. <laughs> so I bought it, and I played it at the uh, the local youth club. We uh, Kirby Lane Youth Club was the place where we started DJing, and uh, the kids loved it. The, the, the kids actually liked. Uh, I'm trying to think of the records which were big for us. Uh, Swoop down on you, Lorenzo Manning was a big one. Mm -hmm. um, Rufus Lumley was a big one. Landslide was a big one. Um, Get out. So, Harold Melvin was a big one. I and this, this was uh, 72, 73. But my pride and joy was Rufus Lumley because nobody else had it. You know, it was yeah, just yeah. great. And so, anyway, um, like always in those days, if, if you talk to anybody back in those days or talk to anybody who went through the teens, there's always like a place you went back to on a Friday night, you know, a after the pub. Remembering that pubs shut on a Friday night in those days at uh, 10.30. Yeah, so we all, all used good. to go back to this flat and we party and play records and, you know, and, 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 and talk about soul music or whatever. And I left my records there one day in, in, a, in a box and we went off somewhere and I came back. And uh, on the Monday I thought, shit, I've left my records down at this flat, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. So I went down to pick them up. I, I, I thought they'd be safe because the guys who lived there I trusted, they were friends. And there's a guy sitting there who wasn't really a soul guy, but he liked to play the guitar. So he's playing his guitar in this, in this, uh, in this, um, on his settee, and I walked in, he was playing his guitar, some crappy folk record. <laughs> so anyway, I picked my records up, and a little 50 count box, and I, I looked in there, and there was my Rufus Lumley. The freaking middle had been pushed out of Rufus Lumley, which is like, uh, you know, uh, taking the engine out of your car. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, who's been in my records? And this guy says, nobody. I says, the middle of my Rufus Lumley has gone. I was, I was like in tears. And he says, oh, I pushed it out. I thought it'd make a great plectrum. He was playing <laughs> folk music with the middle out of my Rufus Lumley. Once you take the middle out of an English record, it uh, devalues it by at least 60%. Because it's it's not intact. It's like uh, it's like having uh, a teapot with no spout. Well, you can repair it. I mean, some people are really good at it, and you'd never notice. But the thing is, I'd know. It's a little bit like going out with a hole in your trousers. Nobody would probably see it, but you know it's yeah, you don't feel yeah, comfortable. It, so yeah, no, that that was the the start of my obsession for um, uh, best condition possible records. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was a a, a little story, but. Uh, I can't stand many other ones, but we'll, we will find yes. other stories.